to be on the same podium with some of these speakers today. I have come to you with a question. Why has it come to pass that today, October 20th, 2012, Anno Domini, we, the people of the United States of America, the greatest nation ever in history, have come to this point that our federal government, a federal government crafted by our founders 225 years ago to protect our rights, that government is now attempting to take away our God-given freedom of religion and conscience. Why? Because over the last 120 years, we the people have increasingly forgotten the truth, turning our backs gradually away from God, the author of all truth. Because today a growing number of us in America hear less and less of the truth. Some may have never even heard the truth. Because today, 90% of us, we who are called by his name, we who call ourselves Christian, 90% of us have to some degree or another bought into the secular lies. We have been seduced by the historical promises that never have and never will be fulfilled. For lack of knowledge, my people perish. Truth matters. The truth shall set you free. The lives enslave you and even kill you. Even if you label those lies as politically correct or as a right of privacy that violates God's law. For those here today who have ears to hear, let me take five minutes to speak truth, God's truth, and then challenge you to do something that will restore America. Restore America to truth. Restore America to its original biblical foundations. First, God made everything. And everything, including us, belong to Him. Each of us needs to acknowledge God as to who He is and who we are in His sight. Submitting himself, ourselves to Him is the only path to true freedom. Quoting Vice President Biden, that's a fact. <laughs> Second, all good comes from God, including all wisdom. In 1787, with scant exception, all 55 constitutional convention delegates from the newly independent 13 states, then under the Articles of Confederation, understood these truths. They had a true biblical world view. They also understood the histories of great nations. The rise of nations to greatness based on founding principles in conformance of God's natural law. The same natural law as cited in the Declaration of Independence. And when these great nations abandoned these founding principles, their great fall into the ash heap of history. These men gathered in Philadelphia's summer heat and Independence Hall to craft the Constitution of the United States not as some living document of man's evolving wisdom or of our ever-growing cancer of legal cases for which Judge Moore uh, uh, referred, but rather on the declaration that we are all endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights based on the unchanging natural law that John spoke to you earlier, hardwired into each of us, based on his unchanging truth, revealed in his word. As the modern theologian 
Dr. R.C. Sproul has observed from such history. Without God, without His truth, there is only power and there is only pleasure. Only Adolf Hitler's and only Hugh Hefner's. Those names may change through history, but the darkness of their lies persists to this very moment. So the United States was founded as a Christian nation, actually a, theo a theocracy, properly defined as a nation that acknowledges God. We acknowledge God as our creator, as our king, as our lawgiver, as our judge, and as our savior. This nation was founded on truth, and the only truth, it was founded on God's truth. And third, both the church and the state also belong to God. Although the church and the state are separate entities, as Judge Moore referred to, under our Constitution, based on biblical principles, the church and the state must interact to properly fulfill their biblically ordained roles. The church is to speak out and to hold the people and by extension the government accountable to God's truth. And biblically, the state, the rightful holder of the sword, is to punish evil and to encourage good. That is its biblical role. Ladies and gentlemen, if the state is to punish evil, if the state is to encourage good, it must first know what is evil. It must first know what is good. Amen. Government must know God's truth, not some evolving version of political correctness we teach in our public schools or some new legal enlightenment invented by mankind. There is nothing new under the sun. The role of the church is to hold the state accountable to God's truth. Today, October 20th, 2012, in the year of our Lord, it is the apogee of arrogance for our federal government to dictate to the people and to the church what is good and what is evil. Today, that is exactly what our federal government mandates to God's people and to God's church. This must not stand. It shall not stand. So help us God. God has raised America to be the greatest nation in history for his purpose. America will only remain so if we return to him and his truth. So for those of you who have ears to hear the truth, here is my challenge to you. Here is my challenge. Read what these people wrote. First, refresh your memory in the one sentence preamble of the Constitution. We the people do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States. Reread the First Amendment, the Bill of Rights. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Third, I challenge you, reread the Declaration of Independence from the beginning when it says, when in the course of human events it becomes necessary down through the second paragraph where it says that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. For those of you out there who are high achievers and want some extra credit, 
I challenge you to search the internet for three documents. The 2012 Democratic Party platform, the 2012 Republican Party platform, and the 2012 Socialist Party platform. Two of these will be very similar. <laughs> but here's the crucial part. When you go to the voting booth on November 6th, do not put an idol before God in your Christian vote. Amen. Do not vote your pocketbook. Do not vote your religion. Do not vote your race. Do not vote your gender. Do not vote your political party. In short, do not vote your self-interest. Instead, vote for those candidates and for those issues which support the foundational biblical values. Vote for truth. The truth will set you free. In closing, allow me a recent quote from a man who is God's, one of God's greatest gifts to the world. Quote, The legacy we leave behind for our children, grandchildren, and this great nation is crucial. As I approach my 94th birthday, I realize this election could be my last. I believe it is vitally important that we cast our ballots for candidates who base their decisions on biblical principles and support the nation of Israel. Amen. I urge you to vote for those who protect the sanctity of life and support the biblical definition of marriage between man and a woman. Vote for biblical values on November 6th and pray with me that America will remain one nation under God. The Reverend Billy Graham. Amen.